storage pools and spaces in Windows Server 2012. This is a great new feature in Server 2012 that really gives you a lot of flexibility for planning out and growing your storage space on servers over time. Uh, it's a way to, to use cheap, inexpensive disks, uh, JBODs, just a bunch of disks, in an effective way to create large and extremely flexible storage areas. Uh, so here's where it begins. You start with one or more physical disks, and these need to be greater than uh, 10 gigabytes. So they need to be at least 10 gigs. But I mean, I doubt you have any old 10 gig drives laying around. You pull in as many of these as you want to, and you can attach them pretty much any way you want to. They could be external USB drives, or, or I guess even Firewire, um, SATA drives, so serial ATA, uh, SAS, serial attached SCSI drives. They could even be virtual hard disk files, VHD or VHDX files. You pull them all together into a storage pool. Now you'll notice that I've got a little different color scheme going on here. Each of these blue ones is intended as a primary. This guy I set up as a hot spare, meaning if one of the primaries takes over, he can jump or fails, he can jump in and take over for that. Now this isn't quite mirroring or raid at this level. The, the designation of a hot spare doesn't automatically cause data to be mirrored over to there, it just designates it as a hot spare. That actually gets utilized at the storage space level. So here's what I've done. I've got a two, four, six, eight, 10 gigaterabyte storage pool, keeping in mind that my hot spare over here isn't being actively used. Now I can start carving that storage pool up into storage spaces. And that's what these guys are, the blue boxes. This first one uh, has been named home data. So each storage space has a name. It has a size. This one's eight terabytes. It has a recovery mode as well as a provisioning mode. Now thin provisioning means that this storage space won't actually occupy eight terabytes. The storage space will dynamically grow and will physically consume space as it needs to. That's in contrast with thick provisioning, which means this one is going to physically take up two terabytes of space out of the storage pool right off the bat. Now, if you were good at math, let's see, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I've got 14 terabytes of space that I've promised, but only two, four, six, eight terabytes of active available space. You might wonder what's going on there. And I'll tell you in just a sec. But there's one more thing we need to focus on first, and that's the recovery mode. And your options are parity, mirrored, and simple. Simple means that your data is not safe. It's not backed up. If you lose any of these underlying drives, any simple space could be affected and you could lose data. Now, if this particular space managed to carve out all of its assets from this one physical hard drive, and this drive failed, then all of this would still be safe, but you don't know that's what's gonna happen. You don't really have that kind of control over it. This one is mirrored. That means all the data is gonna be stored on at least two physical devices in the underlying storage pool, and that's why we designated a hot spare. So if this one is carving its data off of this drive and this drive, and this one fails, then this one will still have a backup and it can grab this and start mirroring the data over to it using that hot spare. Your third option is parity. And that is essentially the same technology that was used by a RAID array, redundant array of inexpensive disks, meaning your data has a primary storage location, but it's actually got parity information stored somewhere else. So if this is lost, the hot spare can come into play or some available space on another one of these physical devices could come into play and the parity information will be used to reconstruct the missing data. Now let's get back to that idea of over provisioning because that's really what I've done here by committing all of this space without actually backing it up with enough physical disks to fulfill that. And it's because you can always come to a storage pool later and add more disk devices. So even though I've significantly overcommitted now, that doesn't have to be an overcommitment later when I actually start using some of this, because remember it's thin provisioned, I'm not actually using it until I need it. Once I start using all that data and my physical devices start to kind of fill up, I can just add more devices and I don't need to reprovision any of the spaces. 
Now on top of a space, once you've created it, you then create a virtual disk, which can be exposed to the machine as a volume like I've done here. So just like any other disk really at that point, but instead of taking it from a single disk, it's spreading it out across all these things. So it's, it's a pretty neat set of technologies. Here in Storage Manager, I can show you what it looks like. We'll pop over to the server's file and storage services. Uh, we'll start at the bottom level with a storage pool. Now you can see that I've got a primordial storage space, uh, and that's the actual set of available disks that have been plugged in, and you can't use that directly. Uh, what I've done instead is built a user data storage space. That's what I named it, user data. So this is a storage pool that is built on top of those physical disks. Yeah, this particular one has a, a roughly 34 gigabyte capacity and there's about 31 gigs free. So what have I done with that? Well, on top of that, I built this virtual disk. Let's take a look at its properties. Uh, it's called Homes. It's 10 gigabytes in capacity. Only two is used so far, which means it's only used two out of the pool space because it is thin provisioned. Uh, it's in good health. This is a simple layout. Uh, it is physically using disk one and two out of my three disk pool. And I don't have any other, it's just, it's read, write access. So that's kind of neat. And uh, on the pool side, let's take a look at this pool's properties. So we built that on top of that space. This is called user data. Again, it is using the storage spaces subsystem. Uh, it's used roughly two and three quarters gigabytes of the 31 that's available to it. It's happy and operational. And I can look at a few different properties of that pool. So the pool has been built on top of this primordial space. Uh, I've built a disk on top of that and I can use it just like I would any other disk space anywhere on the server. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.